It's time y'all heard the tale of that one character from Final Fantasy that everyone knows. The dude who's so famous he entered two different video game universes. The guy whose story is so long that we honestly don't have time for the dramatics right now. So today we're covering Cloud Freaking Strife. And we're telling you right now, you are in for a trip. Cause this story, whoo, this story. Y'all ain't ready for this story. So y'all better buckle up. Play that intro, son. So before we begin, we recommend that you watch the Honest Gaming History of Zack Fair. It's not required that you watch that video to truly understand this story, but knowing Zack's story will make Cloud's story hit a little harder, and also make it make more sense because this shit gets deep. So go ahead and watch that Zack video if you want to. This video will be here when you're ready. But if you'd rather stay, then let's get started with the story. Cloud Strife was born in the village of Nibelheim. His dad died when he was young, so he only had his mother to raise him. He didn't have many friends, but he did have a crush on his neighbor Tifa. When Cloud was nine, Tifa's mother passed away, and Tifa thought she could see her by crossing Mount Nebel. Cloud followed her up there to make sure she was safe, but because of an accident, they both fell, with Cloud falling because he was trying to save Tifa. Cloud left the situation unharmed, but Tifa took mad fall damage. Tifa's father then forbade Cloud from seeing his daughter again, assuming that going to Mount Nebel was his idea. Well, excuse me, sir. Next time I'm out here trying to protect your daughter, I'll just let her fall. This unfair event led Cloud to develop anger issues and get into fights for no reason. Years later, when Cloud is 14, he gets inspired by the soldier First Class Sephiroth and decides to join soldier to become a hero. Cloud calls Tifa out to the village water tower to let her know. She responds to the news by asking him to be her hero when she's in trouble, and he promises to be that hero. Then later, he heads to Midgard to try and enter Soldier. And just to give you a quick recap in case you forgot from the Zack story, Soldier is the military fighting force of the Shinra Electric Power Company. Shinra, who establishes base in Midgar, is a company who is draining the planet's life stream and turning it into an energy source known as Mako. Members of Soldier are enhanced with Mako to basically make them superhuman. But Shinra is out here doing other experiments and enhancements on the side. But we'll get to that later. So Cloud attempts to enter Soldier, but the poor kid doesn't make the cut. He instead becomes a Shinra infantryman, which is basically lower than a pawn. This brings shame to Cloud, so he doesn't stay in contact with anyone from Nibelheim. On one of his missions as an infantryman, he meets the most influential person he will ever meet in his life, Zack. The jubilant Soldier First Class and the infantryman quickly establish a friendship when they realize they are both from the ghetto. And that friendship only grows stronger when they meet up again on a mission back to Cloud's hometown in Nibelheim. A bunch of monsters are showing up in the area, so Soldier's First Class Zack and Sephiroth have been tasked to investigate the Maku reactor outside the village. And because of his shame, Cloud hides his face to stay unseen from the public. Hey, come on, Cloud. Infantry men are still helpful. Man, you know the niggas are useless as shit. But don't worry, my boy Cloud is about to start going off in a bit. Tifa helps the group get to the Mako reactor, but the revelation that Shinra created Sephiroth using the cells of Genova causes Sephiroth to lose his mind. Another recap. So, Genova's part of a shape-shifting alien race who nearly wiped out the Cetra. Cetra being a powerful race who lived on the planet way before humans did. These Cetra were somehow connected to the planet and the live stream, and always spoke about the Promised Land, a place of legend with infinite amounts of Mako. Shinra scientists from back in the day found remnants of Genova and falsely identified it as a Cetra, and they still think it's a Cetra. So in an attempt to make a human Cetra hybrid who could take them to the Promised Land, Shinra started experimenting on humans by injecting them with Genova cells. Many of their experiments failed for obvious reasons, but Sephiroth was the perfect specimen. The Genova cells made him a super soldier, and his success led to the start of Soldier, believe it or not. But yeah, that's enough of Steffi. We'll get back to him later. Back to Cloud, Zack chose them at the end after that whole Sephiroth mess. Cloud expresses his disappointment in himself for not being good enough for Soldier, but Zack's basically like, don't let it get to you, bro. Soldier is fucked up. Then for the next few days, Sephiroth has enough research to find out everything he needs to know about the Genova project, and loses his mind even more in the process. He burns down Nibelheim, kills Tifa's dad, and almost kills Zack at the Mako reactor. But somehow the underdog Cloud tanks Seph's mile-long shank, and uses it to throw him into the depths of the reactor. Stay dead, bitch. The fight completely wipes both Zack and Cloud out, and while they're in their unconscious state, Shinra picks them up. For four years, Dr. Hojo psychotic ass experiments on them, exposing them to crazy amounts of Mako and injecting them with Genova cells. These tests were part of Hojo's Genova reunion theory, the belief that if separated, Genova cells would reunite. This need to reunite being so strong that the cells would have the power to influence the host's mind. Zack breaks him out of the lab after the four years, but Cloud is suffering from Mako poisoning, so he's currently out of commission. Zack makes it his mission to get him and the little homie Cloud to Midgar before Shinra catches them. But Shinra catches them at the last minute. Then to protect Cloud, Zack takes on the army of Shinra troops waiting for them. Cloud wakes up after the war and finds Zack barely holding on to life. 
The soldier first class that bestows onto him is Buster's sword, then tells the kid to carry on his dreams and be his living legacy. Cloud is sad about the loss of this person who is like a big brother to him, but he moves forward with his Buster's sword in hand. This brings us to the original Final Fantasy VII. As I said in my last video, the FF7 remake has some pretty unavoidable differences with the old story. So to give you guys the full Cloud experience, I'm sticking with the original FF7 story. So please be aware, even though I'm gonna use footage from the remake, cause it's pretty as fuck, I'm still covering Cloud's original story. We can cover the remake story whenever Square decides to make part two and possibly part three. Sometime after Zack's death, Tifa finds Cloud mumbling gibberish in the Sector 7 slums of Midgar. When Tifa confronts her old friend, Cloud displays some very odd signs. His memory is off and he's suffering from head pains and random blackouts. And for some reason, he thinks he's an ex-soldier first class. Cloud, did you forget you were trash? Worried about her friend, Tifa kills two birds with one stone by asking Cloud to join her eco-terrorist group, Avalanche. These guys see the evil in Shinra and they're fighting to stop them from continuing to cultivate massive amounts of Mako and sucking the planet dry. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we just talk about how cool this is? In a world where a powerful ass company is basically killing the planet, a terrorist faction is the only thing that can stop them. Your mission in this game is to literally go green and save the planet. This is why the FF7 story is so lit. It has a unique plot that touches on real world issues. Like if you're completely new to the FF7 story, I can guarantee you, you've never heard a story like this before. Tifa asks Cloud to join because she wants to keep an eye on him, but they can honestly use his strength since he's apparently ex-soldier now. Cloud then accompanies Avalanche on their mission to blow up the Mako reactor in Sector 1. Leading this mission is the gun arm badass himself, Barrett. Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse are here too, but let's be real. In the original game, they didn't matter. Off rip, Barrett shows that he doesn't trust Cloud since he used to work for Shinra, but Barrett's suspicion doesn't really bother Cloud, since all he cares about is the mission and getting his money. Team Fuck Shinra successfully infiltrates the reactor, and Cloud pops off. Like, my man is nice with the Buster Sword. Well, thanks to all them Genova cells giving him a power increase. They plant the bomb, fight a big ass robot, then escape the reactor before it explodes. However, during the mission, Cloud is constantly bothered by a voice in his head. It even stopped him as he was trying to plant the bomb, saying that this isn't just a reactor. After the mission, they head back to their hideout in the Seventh Heaven Bar, located in the Sector 7 slums. There they unite with Tifa and Barrett's daughter Marlene. Barrett once again questions where Cloud's loyalties lie, but Cloud continues to be edgy as shit and tells Barrett that he doesn't give a fuck about Shinra, the planet, or Avalanche. The diva storms off, but then Tifa stops him and asks once again that he join their cause. She refers to the promise that he made to her about being her hero. And I mean, you can't say no to Tifa. I mean, come on. So Cloud accepts and charges them some more gil for the next job. Their next mission brings them to the Mako Reactor in Sector 5. This mission goes well too until they find out it's a trap. Shinra corners them and in an attempt to stop their escape, Shinra then sends an annoying ass enemy their way to stop them. They defeat the thing, but the battle leads to Cloud getting separated from Barrett and Tifa and falling down to the Sector 5 slums. Hmm, sounds like someone else we know. He wakes up in a church and is met by the flower girl Aerith. Just like someone else we know. They chat for a bit, then the Turk Reno shows up. To correct myself in my last video, the Turks are basically like the CIA for Shinra. They're keeping a watchful eye on Aerith because she's the last sister on the planet. Aerith doesn't feel like hanging with Reno right now, so she asks Cloud to be her bodyguard in exchange for a date. He accepts, then fights with the Turks so they can escape. Aerith brings him to her house where they meet her mother. Kinda early for that, don't you think? Cloud asks how he can get back to Sector 7 so he can reconvene with Tifa and Barrett. She volunteers to show him the way and later they head out. On the way, they chose the same park Aerith and Zack went to on their first date. She asks him about what rank of soldier he was in and Soldier First Class just kinda pops into Cloud's head as a response. Even though we all know this nigga failed the entrance exam for the Academy of Hanzology. Uh, so we're still doing this, huh? I mean, you can check the comments, the fam sided with me. All right, whatever, I'll shit on you, but I never shit on the fam. Anyways, while they're chilling at the park, Cloud spots Tifa. She's heading to the mafia boss, Don Corneo, over the Sector 6 slums, because he has info about Shinra that she wants. Cloud and Aerith follow her without her knowledge, but when they get to Corneo's place, they find out that he's only seeing women. This dude runs these Sector 6 streets in search of the perfect bride for the night. They're brought to his place and he chooses which one he wants. Whoa, 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 for the night? What's happening to them in the morning? Uh, we don't talk about that. So since Cloud can't get in to help his friend out, Aerith proposes that he dress up as a girl. With no other choice, he accepts the proposal. Then they infiltrate Corneo's place. So in the remake before this happens, you're here with a bunch of dope ass mini games. One being this quick time event thing where you dance in the Honey Bee Inn as Cloud. This shit's spectacular, I swear. Once they enter the Don's mansion, he makes his appearance to evaluate the ladies in Cloud. He takes one look at Cloud, somehow doesn't deduce that this is a grown ass man, and is like, you look like you give some bomb ass head, then chooses him. So Corneo takes Girl Cloud to his private room and tries putting the smooth moves on him. But Tifa and Aerith break in to rescue him and jump Corneo. Trapped in a corner, Corneo reveals that Shinra hired him to sniff out Avalanche's hideout. Now that they know where it is, Shinra is going to drop the Sector 7 plate on it. 
Okay, so a little Midgar architecture for you. Midgar is divided into two parts, the slums and the top plating. And then these platings are divided into the eight sectors that we keep talking about. The top plating is right above the slums. So the slums get little to no sunlight, the air is polluted, and most of the people live in poverty. So by dropping the top plate, what they're actually doing is taking this giant mass of metal that's as big as the sector seven slums and just dropping it on there. All for a handful of eco-terrorists. Now do you truly understand how evil Shinra is? On top of that, they want to blame the whole thing on Avalanche and then make themselves look good by helping with the whole rebuild effort. Fucking evil, son. Cloud, Aerith, and Tifa rush over to Sector 7 to save her from its demise. Aerith is just kind of tagging along at this point. They find Barrett and the rest of Avalanche fighting a losing battle against Shinra. They instruct Aerith to go to the bar and save Barrett's daughter. Then Cloud and Tifa push on to assist Barrett. When they get to him, it turns out that they're too late. Sector 7's destruction is imminent, and Aerith went and got herself captured by Sung the Turk. Damn it, bro, I thought you were cool. Luckily, they escaped the destruction alive, but Sector 7 is kind of gone now, along with Wedge, Biggs, and Jesse if you cared about those guys. With nowhere to go, Cloud leaves what's left of Avalanche to Aerith's house. Barrett's daughter is there and they can talk to Aerith's mom about why Shinra wants Aerith so bad. Aerith's mother, Elmira, reveals to the group that Aerith is the last ancient in existence, and apparently she's Aerith's adoptive mother. Elmira found Aerith's mom dying on the street. They were on the run from Shinra, so the mother asked Elmira to watch over her daughter. For years, Elmira raised Aerith while Shinra kept tabs on her. Since Aerith is an actual ancient, unlike Jenova, she can lead them to the promised land, where they'll have access to unlimited Mako. With this in mind, Cloud decides that their next priority is to save Aerith from Shinra. They make it to the Shinra building and spy on a meeting with the Shinra higher ups. The person in charge of urban development, Reed, tries to talk to the president about the bullshit that went down at Sector 7, but the president instead talks about his plans to get to the promised land and build Neo Midgar there. Cloud and the gang then make it to the lab at the top of the Shinra building, where Cloud finds a headless body of Jenova. They finally find Aerith, but Hojo is in the midst of experimenting on her. He doesn't think Aerith is a decent specimen, so he wants to breed this lab rat dog thing with her to make more useful specimens. Hojo, what the hell is wrong with you? They save the two, and the red lion dog who goes by Red 13 decides to join their team. They eventually get caught though, and Shinra imprisons a group. Cloud wakes up later to find his cell open with a bunch of slaughtered guards. He convenes with the rest of the fuck Shinra squad, and they follow the bloody trail to find the president of Shinra, dead. And the weapon that killed him belongs to Sephiroth, meaning that Sephiroth somehow didn't die after Cloud threw him into the Mako reactor. As if on cue, President Shinra's son, Rufus, shows up to take his rightful place on the throne of Shinra. Cloud defeats the new president, then him and the rest of the group escape the building and leave Midgar. They don't really have a plan moving forward, so Cloud decides that Sephiroth is his target. You can't leave that edgelord alive, son. Barrett, who now trusts Cloud a little more, decides to go along with Cloud. Tifa wants to be there for her friend, so she tags along. Aerith wants to learn more about her heritage, so she decides to tag along as well. And Red just kind of joins because it would be pretty awkward to back out now. They chill in and in afterwards to rest up and just let all the nonsense sink in. To gear them up with as much Sephi knowledge as possible, Cloud tells them his version of the Nibelheim incident story. And in his version, he replaces Zack with himself. Tifa peeps how wrong this is because she was there, but she keeps her mouth shut. They start their pursuit of Sephiroth the next day. Their quest leads them to a bunch of Turks where a new member, Elena, accidentally reveals that Sephiroth is heading to Junon. That's what happens when you don't shut that damn mouth. After this, they run into the Materia hunter Yuffie. She tries to rob them, but after they beat her, she joins their team. Eventually, Cloud and the gang make it to Junon. Their Cloud continues to hear a voice in his head, but this time the voice tells him to ask Tifa about what really happened back in Nibelheim. But she once again dodges an evil subject. Woman, why are you letting Cloud go through this when you could just tell him the truth? Afterwards, a parade is held to celebrate the new president of Shinra, Rufus. Somehow, no one is talking about how this man seems to not care about his dad being dead. Anyways, Cloud and the group use the parade as an opportunity to board the Shinra airship that Rufus arrived on. They successfully infiltrate the ship, and Cloud finds out that Sephiroth has crossed the ocean to go to the new continent, and Hojo is resigning from Shinra. Hojo? Resigning? Yeah, that can be good. So the gangsters on the ship disguise as Shinra infantrymen and uses to get across the ocean to Costa del Sol. But Sephiroth appears in the ship and slaughters a bunch of the passengers. Then he reveals himself to Cloud and friends and flies away, leaving the arm of Jenova for them to fight. Later, after they land on the new continent, they run into Hojo surrounded by a bunch of women. That just makes no sense. Hojo says that he left Shinra to pursue Sephiroth using his own methods. Then after some more talking, he tells him to head west. I mean, thanks? Their adventure leads him to North Corral, Barrett's old home. Then to Gold Saucer, the famous amusement park. Cloud and everyone have fun at the park, recruit the weird cat robot, Kate Sith, get arrested, then free themselves and leave to continue looking for Sephiroth. They continue their journey till they get to Cosmo Canyon, Red 13's old home. Red reveals that his real name is Nanaki. Then they meet his grandpa, Bugenhagen. Bugenhagen is very well versed with the way the planet works, so he explains more details about the live stream to the group. So it turns out that when someone dies, their soul goes to the live stream as energy, but life also comes from the live stream. So the live stream is basically this giant river where life comes from and also also goes back to once over. The live stream holds the planet together. So if Shinra continues to cultivate more and more Mako, the planet will die. Shinra, please stop screwing the planet. So after they're given more reasons to stop Shinra, the group go back to Tifa's and Cloud's hometown, 
Nibohan. Even though it was burned down years ago, the town has been rebuilt by Shinra to mass the incident that went down a while back, but has a bunch of weird people inhabiting it talking about a reunion. They enter a mansion and find the wannabe vampire, Vincent. Cloud mentions Sephiroth and Vincent's like, you know Sephiroth? But because of his honestly screwed up past, after he talks to the group, he starts sulking and goes back to sleep. In the basement of the mansion, Sephiroth appears spotting things about a reunion and tells Cloud to meet him up north. So the group does just that and start heading out in evil, but Vincent has a change of heart and decides to join them for his own personal revenge. We talk about this more, but this is a story of Cloud Strife, not Vincent. Plus, we still have a lot of story to get to. Afterwards, they head to Rocket Town, where they meet Sid, the best pilot in the world. Sid has beef with Shinner because back in the day, when he worked with them, they were a weapons manufacturer who were interested in space travel. But once they found out about Mako and how much money owning an energy source would make them, they abandoned the space program, thus killing Sid's dream. Later, Rufus enters the town requesting Sid's plane so they can use it to chase Sephiroth. But instead of handing it to the Shinra bastard, Cloud, Sid, and the squad take it for themselves and fly away. But Rufus shoots it down and they have to use it as a boat. Then Sid joins their team to seek his own revenge against Shinra. With the now complete FF7 team here, they continue on their quest for Sephiroth and eventually find out that Dio from Gold Saucer is a keystone that can open the Temple of the Agents. The group has to Gold Saucer and earn the keystone from Dio. Then they have a group discussion at an to sit down and really figure out what's going on. Everyone is just kind of following Cloud, but they have no idea why Sephiroth is even a problem. Cloud says that Sephiroth is after the promised land and they need to stop him, but there still seems to be a bunch of confusion within the group. No one in the group knows what Sephiroth is going to do when he gets to the promised land. And there are a bunch of cloak people with number tattoos talking about reunions and Sephiroth, and they have no idea how these guys are involved either. So they agree that the best idea is to just find Sephiroth and interrogate him. I mean, that makes sense. But later, Kate Sith betrays a group and gives a keystone they just earned to Shinra. Kate Sith, why? The big Bitch ass cat reveals that he works for Shinra. Then he has the gall, the nerve, to tell him to act like this never happened. Nigga, what? This thing is apparently a toy being controlled by a Shinra employee who's actually kinda on their side. So even if they kill it, the employee will still be alive. This employee being Reeb, by the way. And Reeb also has Barrett's daughter hostage, so killing Kate Sith wouldn't be the best idea. The cat tells Cloud that he can lead them to the Temple of the Ancients, so they should just follow him. They get to the temple and find Sung in critical condition due to a battle against Sephiroth. He reveals that Sephiroth isn't actually after the Promised Land. So what the hell does this guy want? They find Sephiroth deeper in the tower, and he actually explains what he wants. Oh. Lit. So according to Sephiroth, if you do great harm to the planet, it will gather spirit energy to heal itself. What Sephiroth wants to do is use the ultimate black magic meteor to critically harm the planet. Then he'll absorb all the energy the planet produces in response to the attack and ascend into godhood. Oh, so he wants to be a god. Yeah, someone needs to kill this man. Sephiroth then dips again, and Cloud starts spazzing out about finally finding his way. Yeah, Cloud, now's not the time to start losing your shit again. They find out that the Temple of the Ancients is the black materia required to summon Meteor. If they solve the puzzle within the temple, then it will continue to shrink until it turns into the materia. So Kate Sis decides to stay back and sacrifice himself to morph the temple into the black materia. He succeeds and they attain the materia. So you think this means they won, right? They have a black materia, so Sephiroth can't summon Meteor, right? <laughs> Well, folks, it's time for you to hear the tale of how Cloud fucked up. Sephiroth shows up and immediately plays a trap card implanted by Hojo years ago, Genova Cells. He commands Cloud to hand him the Black Materia, and the Genova Cells within him influence his mind and force him to, thus giving some evidence of the Genova reunion theory Hojo was testing. Then in horror, they watch as Cloud hands the end of the world to Sephiroth, then try to attack Aerith. The team, including a new Kate Sith, stop him before he's able to do anything crazy. In a dream, Cloud is met by Aerith and he apologizes for almost slicing her in half with his sword. She forgives him, then tells Cloud to relax while she takes care of Sephiroth. As the last Cetra, it is up to her to do it. But Cloud, who has above a strong bond with Aerith and honestly everyone else throughout their adventure, doesn't want to leave this white mage to handle a broken ass villain like Sephiroth by herself. But before he can do anything about it, Cloud wakes up and the group tells him that Aerith went to the city of the agents on her own. They want to follow her, but Cloud is scared that he's gonna freak out again and hurt his friends. So his squad convinces him to keep going forward. I mean, he drags them into this craziness, it would be pretty awkward if he backed out now. They find Aerith in the city praying, then when Cloud walks up to her, he almost kills her again. Cloud, chill! Luckily, he snaps out of Sephiroth's control, but it doesn't matter because Sephiroth was watching all this time, and he's like, Aerith praying? Welp, can't have that. Then stabs her with 12 feet of broken. Ain't nobody stopping my plans, bitch. Cloud and his team then mourn the death of their friend Aerith, then use this as even more resolve to kill Sephiroth. They make it to the North Crater and find more cloaked dudes walking to the center of the crater. The group gets the Black Materia back, and Cloud realizes that none of the Sephiroths they met were the real Sephiroth. 
So all the cloaked figures with tattoos that we were talking about are actually people who were experimented on and given Genova cells. Because Sephiroth was the first successful Genova project, these guys were called Sephiroth clones. Thanks to Genova cells, these guys were able to shapeshift into Sephiroth. But the real Sephiroth is here. Now you're all smart, beautiful people. So you're probably wondering, doesn't this make Cloud a Sephiroth clone too? It does. And he's high key distraught about it. So Cloud hands the black material to someone else so he doesn't go giving it up again. Then they head to the heart of the crater. There they witness what really happened at Nibelheim, except for the part where Cloud saved the day. This messes Cloud up, as he realizes that because of the cells within him, he could just be some random dude who morphed into the real Cloud and fabricated all these memories. So Cloud has no idea who or what he is anymore. Cloud and the gang are then teleported to Rufus, Hojo, and some more of the Shinra members near the crater. Then Cloud takes the Black Materia, apologizes to his friends, then leaves under Sephiroth's influence. He gives the Black Materia to the real Sephiroth, then the crater begins to shake as Cloud falls into the live stream. Days later, Tifa and the group find Cloud and Medeal, out of convention once again, thanks to Mako poisoning. Sephiroth has already summoned the meteor, so they kind of need his help. No time for being paralyzed, Cloud. However, Cloud's state is pretty bad, so Tifa decides to stay with him as he recovers while the rest of the group goes to fight Shinra. And fun fact, Tifa was the only one who was really down to go looking for Cloud. When she talked to the gang about it, they were all kind of done with Cloud. Even Sid was just like, I thought the kid was weird from Jump. This is just crazy. The dude went rogue out of nowhere and pretty much caused his whole mess. And this is not me saying they're wrong for being mad at him, but the guy was experimented on for four years, guys. Come on. Because of all the crazy shit going on, Medeal is hit by a fissure which causes Tifa and Cloud to fall within a live stream. While they're in the live stream, Tifa is somehow transported into Cloud's subconscious. There she helps to fix him by piecing together all of his memories to create the true story of what happened in Nibelheim. The true full story. He realizes that he was there during the Nibelheim mission. He was that infantry man that slayed Sephiroth. And after Zack died, the trauma from everything and the Genova cells kind of rewrote his memories to make him think that he lived a part of Zack's life. So technically speaking, the real bad guy here isn't Sephiroth. It's freaking Hojo. He's the one who started all this bullshit by trying to make Sephiroth clones. Now look what happened. Cloud is a grown ass man who is just now rediscovering himself and the world's about to end. The fuck, Hojo? Now aware of his true identity, Cloud wakes up with Tifa and together they reconvene with Team Save the World from Sephiroth before he blows it the fuck up. Cloud tells the team the truth about everything and they continue their mission to saving the world from the meteor that is still on its way. The team returns to Elder Bugenhagen for some guidance, and he tells them that the only defense they have against the meteor is the ultimate white magic known as Holy. However, the only way to use Holy is to pray to the white materia. Luckily, Aerith had the materia, and all that praying she was doing actually activated the magic. So my girl had a trap card in play all this time. I see you, girl. However, Sephiroth is currently at the planet's core holding the healing magic back. And they love to go after Sephi right now, but the bastard is using an impenetrable barrier to keep himself protected. In an attempt to stop Sephiroth, Shinra fires a cannon at the barrier and it breaks. However, due to a defense mechanism from the planet known as Diamond Weapon, Midgar takes some damage and Rufus dies. With the barrier taken care of, Cloud and the group start heading for Sephiroth. Now there is nothing stopping them from taking him down, letting Holy activate, and saving the world. Except for Hojo. God damn it, Hojo! Because he's a fuck, Hojo wants to use a Mako cannon created by Shinra to send all the energy he can to Sephiroth to make him stronger. Why? Why would you do that? They find Hojo and he reveals that he is actually Sephiroth's father. Whew! Okay, first of all, right of applause to you for sticking around so far because honestly, I know, I know this is a lot, but you're hanging in there. Proud of you, bro. Anyways, way back when Hojo was a young psychopath, he and his assistant Lucrecia were in a romantic relationship and he ended up getting her pregnant. But then they gave their child away for science and injected the fetus with Genova cells. That fetus was Sephiroth. Now Hojo has Genova cells within him and he fights the group, but they take him down. Afterwards, the team prepares to finally take on Sephiroth and eliminate the meteor coming their way. Everyone discovers their own reason for fighting this battle, with Cloud's reasoning being to end this feud with the white-haired edge god once and for all. And Tifa's reasoning being to stay with Cloud. With new resolve, the team team then takes on Sephiroth who actually does become a god. Look at this man, son. After a long and I mean long ass battle, they defeat Edgelord Jesus. But Cloud gets hit by another mind spasm due to the remnants of Sephiroth that are still there. He gets thrown into a one-on-one -on -one duel with the guy in his unconscious. Then he beats him once again. After Seph's final defeat, Holy is cast and protects the planet from Meteor, but it's not enough to hold it off. So the planet's live stream enters the fray and breaks down the meteor, thus finally saving the world. But guess what? We ain't even done yet. After Cloud and the group barely take the planet, Tifa and Cloud start building a new life together in a new city called Edge that is located on the outskirts of Midgar. Cloud needs to make some money somehow, so he sets up the strike delivery service. However, he is still depressed about the friends he lost in his adventures. Because of his work, he runs into a boy named Denzel, whose family died back when the Sector 7 plate fell. Denzel is plagued by something called Geostigma. It's a disease that began to spread when the livestream covered the planet during the fall of Meteor. The cause of the disease is no other than Genova cells, because you know we can't escape this damn alien. Genova cells found a way to infect the livestream, so anyone who came in contact with it when it wrapped 
wrapped around the planet, contracted Geostigma. To protect Enzel, Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and Marlene opened their home to him. But unfortunately, while looking for a cure to the disease, Cloud contracts Geostigma too because of his Genova cells. Then in the movie Advent Children, three men who came to be the remnants of Sephiroth make an appearance. Rufus, apparently still alive and suffering from Geostigma, requests for Cloud's help in taking this trio down. Cloud rejects them, but the trio ends up becoming a huge problem. For one, one of them hurt Tifa. I mean, she also kind of beat his ass, but still. Then they came up with a bunch of kids who have Geostigma and had them drink from the contaminated live stream. Um, police? So with the help of some live stream infused water, Cloud cures himself of the Geostigma. Then with the help of his old friends and six swords, cause I guess one big ass sword wasn't enough, he defeats a wild Bahamut, then defeats a revived Sephiroth along with the trio of remnants. Then Aerith somehow pulls another clutch move from the dead and uses live stream rain to cure everyone of their Geostigma. I love this girl, son. I mean, yeah, Aerith's dope, but Tifa, bro. Tifa is the realist. And Tifa's aight. Aerith's a white mage though. You needs that. I mean, Tifa didn't die though. Oh, that's low. So a year after this happened, in the game Dirge of Cerberus, which doesn't really have anything to do with Cloud, he and the rest of the gang held Vincent against the weapon Omega. Then after he helps with Vincent's quest, he continues living his life with his friends, knowing that he is no longer alone in this world. And there you have it, fam. That is Cloud's full story. His long, convoluted, edgy as shit story. As crazy as it got though, I still think this is one of the best stories in gaming history. Cloud's story was one of acceptance, discovery, and growth. And when you really think about it, it just goes to show that Cloud is more than that random, edgy, moody ass character that everyone sees him as. The kid has depth, and you come to find out that the real Cloud is actually a nice dude. So yeah, let me know how you feel about Cloud's story in the comments below. Also, let me know who else you want to see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History. And also, in the comments below, answer me this. Who is best girl of Final Fantasy VII? Aerith or Tifa? You decide. With that, I am off this. End screen. What's up, fam? Thank you guys so much for watching this new episode of Honest Gaming History. Whew. Whew, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It took a lot to write, to edit, to everything. It's, 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 mm. hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this clusterfuck of a story, but I, it, 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 it's, it's pretty solid. It's a pretty solid story. I liked it. I enjoyed it. As I said before, let me know how you feel about the story down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share with all your friends, comments as well. Shout out to Adrian, Alex Oradola, Angel Muino, Bear Revel, Black Link, David Gray, Deimos, Devlin08, DJ Durrell Doodles, Elbert Adams Jr., Gil Thomas, Isaiah Mendes, that's my boy. That's my boy. You too, Angel. I didn't forget about you too. Jay Stewart, Jakari Scott, Jerry Wool, Jay Reaper 08, Kevin Kelly, Mackenzie Smith, Nathaniel Flayful, Nathaniel McNeil. Hey, y'all got the two names. You got the same name. That's, that's, that's cool. Nier O Salat, Painful Gaming, Scrazor, my boy. Space, also my boy. The Black Bob Ross, another one of my boys. Travis Wilson Sr., Trey Trey, Ungrateful, I'm guessing because there's a V there, but I'm not gonna say ungriptful. That, that wouldn't make any sense. Will Bruce and Wink Mink, I appreciate all of you. Those, if you didn't know, are all the patrons that are help me, helping me throughout these hard COVID times and stuff like that. So yeah, if you wanna become a patron and support the channel, donate every month, all that good stuff, check out the link in the description below. It's also gonna be somewhere in the end screen when all this is over and stuff, but yeah. Check it out, support if you can, but if you can't support, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff is still super helpful. Don't forget that. With that being said, I am off this. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, and take care, and stay healthy. And remember, if you do whatever the fuck you put your mind to, all it takes is practice and time. Be safe, y'all.